Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about the rather controversial KD-6 tank. Uh, if you've studied tanks for a little bit, you probably know about the KD-6 Behemoth, the uh, very, very long KV tank uh, model, which was made by Brian Fowler back in 1996. That tank, of course, is not real. Um, even for April 1st, I'm not going to pretend that it is, because here at Tank Archives, we never sacrifice historical accuracy for the sake of comedy. However, there's one thing that is real about that tank, and that is the Index KD-6. Uh, and if you think about it, you know, why wouldn't it be? Uh, you have KV-1-2, the ones that were actually built, uh, KV-3, KV-4, KV-5, if you played World of Tanks, you know about them. Those are real projects as well. Um, and then the tank that bears the name KV-7, well, that was conceived in the fall of 1941, and it was followed by the KV-8. Uh, which was a flamethrower variant um, of the KV-1 with a flamethrower in the turret. Um, there was the KV-9, which had the 122mm howitzer uh, prototypes, 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 until you get to the KV-13, uh, which is the precursor to the IS series. Um, and the KV-14, which was the last of the KV tanks. It wasn't even really a tank. That was the code name for the SU-152 assault gun. And so... Well, there's got to be a KV-6 in there somewhere, because it's a sequential index. Uh, Wikipedia will tell you that the KV-6 was a flamethrower tank. Um, well, you all know what I think, you know what I think about Wikipedia, uh, and if you actually even follow the citation for that claim, it goes to some page that looks like hasn't been updated since the 90s with absolutely no sources. So, well, eh, not a great, uh, not a great start there, but even if you think about it logically, the KV-1, KV-2 were already around by the end of 1940, and that's when the order to begin development of a KV-1 tank with an ATO flamethrower in the hull was given. And so logically it would make sense for if the tank got a new index, which again was not a given, um, it would be called KV-3 because that's the next index in the series. Um, and then fine, maybe it took until the spring to get the tank a new index. Uh, in the spring, the tank that was supposed to go into service to replace the KV-1 was called KV-3. Uh, it's a further development of the T-150 tank, uh, which you also would know if you played World of Tanks. Again, that was a real project that was actually built in metal and tested. And so an improved version would be accepted under the name KV-3. And so fine, if the flamethrower KV-1 was accepted into service after that, the index would be KV-4. Uh, but no, uh, according to Wikipedia, it's KV-6. So the question then is, what is the real KV-6? Um, since the KV-1 with the flamethrower, there's documents all about it. It's just called KV-1 with the flamethrower. It didn't get a new blueprints index. It didn't get uh, any kind of new fancy name. Well, the KV-6, uh, you actually need to go back a little bit to that T-150 that I mentioned. So the uh, upgraded T-150 called T-222. Uh, was going to be accepted into service as the KV-3. Except shortly after, Soviet intelligence found out about German heavy tanks. Um, and it wasn't the Tiger, and it wasn't uh, the Panther or anything like that. Um, these were prototypes, paper panzers, that uh, weren't really a real threat. But nevertheless, uh, the Soviet army, the Red Army, thought that we need to have our own heavy tanks to counter those tanks. And so... The name KV-3 was usurped by a tank with the Blueprints Index 223, which if you played Roll the Tanks, you would know as the KV-3. Um, and then the improved T-150, the T-222, it was just kind of left by the wayside. Uh, and then the KV-4 and KV-5, well, those are just bigger and heavier tanks. And the idea was that the KV-3 would be built um, and put into production in 1941. The KV-4 and KV-5, you would build prototypes of. And in 1942, there would be a comparative trials to see which of these tanks would actually go and become the Red Army's next heavy tank. Seems like a good idea, uh, but then the Germans uh, invaded and threw all those plans into disarray. And so KV-3, 4, and 5, they weren't cancelled until much later, but it was very clear that it's not going to be a short-term solution. And so Marshal Kuliak actually had the bright idea of we already have an approved heavy tank all right it wasn't as good as you know we we wanted it to be it wasn't as big or as heavy but uh we, we have it um 
And so it was even a draft decree that he composed uh, for the Council of um, Council of Defense to take the T-150, refurbish it, send it to the Chilabin Square, uh, KD-1 production was set up, and start building it there under the name KV-6. And so the KV-6 was slightly different from the KV-1. It had 90 millimeters of front armor. It had a 76 uh, millimeter model 1940 gun, so the F-34. And it had a uh, 700 horsepower engine, supercharged uh, V2K. And interestingly enough, it did have a flamethrower, but it didn't have a uh, flamethrower in the hull like the KV-1 did, um, or the T-34 flamethrower tank. It had external flamethrowers. Uh, they were mounted on defenders. They were single-shot disposable flamethrowers. So that's the one overlap between Wikipedia's KV tank and the real KV-6. Um, unfortunately, the tank was never built. Uh, even the regular KV-1, shortly after this idea was floated, it was upgraded to 90 millimeters of front armor. Uh, and in the fall of 1941, it did get the... Not the F-34, but this is 5 with the same ballistics as the F-34. And there was one KV tank which did receive the 700 horsepower engine, but it was a prototype um, built in uh, early 1942. And it turns out the cooling system couldn't handle it, so the whole idea just kind of was swept away. Um, so the KV-6 was never built. Uh, no tank that matches its requirements was ever built. Uh, but it was a real project, uh, even though it wasn't what Wikipedia says it was.